Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tia Know the Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover. And right now, we are at war with Magadan. And this might make or break my sanity because this might be very, very difficult. But we'll see what happens. Cheetah's not coming to war yet, but that's okay. We have more divisions than these guys. I just hope that, hope that God, Cheetah does not get involved. Okay, let's, get, let's kill them all. Let's go in, boys. Let's go straight on and kill off half the entire army here in Magadan and have a good time doing so. Well, you guys. Head on down over and do that. Actually, just head on over here and go straight for the Polt. God, I hope we can do well. But, looks like we're doing relatively okay so far. I like this. This is good. Over here, looking okay. Not too bad. I'm glad we have the motorized. I'm so glad I rush getting military stuff. But, I hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Um, we got quite a few comments to go through as well. But, our own Patriarch. I'm glad I didn't do this one yet. We're going to wait till the war's over to do, to do this one. But, for Holy Russia... If there is a single thing that defined the Russian Dudist party among its ideological fellows, it is our high spirituality and unfeigned devotion to the idea of the Third Rome, to the orthodox faith that held together Russia for a thousand years and came to her aid in difficult times. How could it be any different? Adopting the principles of Dudism as it was envisioned by Mr. Dude and the other cool dude, we brought it to the Russian soul, made it embrace the Russian traditions, very spiritual in nature. And I do want to say real quick, I might have read this already, but oh well. The Bolsheviks knew the strength that lies with the orthodox church and by all means, try to destroy it, to deprive the Russian people of their faith and make it worship their satanic cults of Mordecai, Marx, and Lenin, and the cults of their moral depravity and blasphemy. For such insults we will not stand, once more Russia will be the paragon of Christian faith, and God himself will guide his warriors against the forces of the devil. I do apologize. I Sometimes, I, I read so many things. I, I go through so many events and focuses every day that sometimes I forget what I've already stated and what I've already read, so I'm pretty sure I read that one already, so I do apologize about that, so... And some guy died. Well, it is what it is. There's going to be a lot more dead guys here anyways. Ooh, will the Jews and Arabs ever get along? That's really cool. I like that image. That looks really cool. Israel. Who the heck are you? Israel? Well, that's kind of cool. He's kind of Ukrainian. Okay. He emigrated to Tel Aviv. <sighs> Very cool. Of course, that saying that doesn't really fit the image of uh, <clears throat> Mr. Konstantin Rozevsky. Very good. Uh, head on over here, guys. Uh, well, if Cheetah's not getting involved, then that's a very bad thing for Magadon. Magadon. However you pronounce your name. Doesn't matter, they're all going to die now. They've killed 22,000 enemies. And they have but a singular division left. I'm going to keep these guys here just in case, just because... I don't know what's going to happen. Oh. Hello. The port... Ca captured? Wait. Oh, maybe Okhotsk is the actual VP here? That has actual, like, that has three VPs. This one has none. So technically, we did get the port captured. So if you want to read about that, please go ahead. But the gateway to Russia has been secured. Hopefully that's all we need to grab, right? Right, totally right. All right, truckies, keep going, going, going. You're about to get in circle, probably. And we do have enough fuel for now, so uh, keep these guys in place. That'd be very good. And that's literally their last division, so I'm okay with that. We dream of our own Thailand, huh? Well, that's nice. And we can probably close that out. We have high relations with the Japanese, because we love the Japanese for now. And we can close that out, too. Very good. Electronics. It's only one bonus for 50 political power. We already have high relations. Do we have enough guns right now? We technically should. Oh, we got 1,600. Ikeda is now elected. Very cool, very cool. Keep those guys in place. And how are you guys doing? For Holy Russia. Very bueno. Even if you do this, I think it'll still be okay. So, a new Supreme Council. I think I read this one already. So... Ooh, yeah. Um, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. I, I I do apologize that if I haven't read this one, but yeah, I just like I said earlier, I, I read through so many focuses, so my apologies. Uh, all the other ones though, I'm pretty sure I didn't read yet, so that'll be good. A holy mission. Oh, as the gospel reading ended, the new patriarch of Russia. <clears throat> stepped forward to take the deacon's place before his flock. The once modest church in Zaya had been decorated from floor to rafters with golden icons taken from Habin. A great mass of black shirts, soldiers, and regular citizens packed the floor, pressed into every corner like sardines. Those outside crowded around half-open doors, eager to hear the hierarchs first homily. Brothers and sisters in Christ, he began, his voice filled with the stern strength of a seasoned preacher. We live in the darkest of days. The Lord looks down upon our holy land and surely weeps. Where once there stood a nation of wise priests, humble peasants, and pious soldiers, there is now little more than ash and ruin. His chosen people have been ravaged by war, famine, pestilence, and strife. We all seek answers to soothe our souls, the greatest of which must be, 
Whom do we hold responsible? Who has brought the ruinations of Satan to holy Russia? The church was silent for a moment, save for the soft whistling of the wind through the loose shinglings, or shingles. The sons of Cain, the patriarch suddenly bellowed, his audience thoroughly enraptured. The murders of Christ, who have survived in the home of the faithful for generations, as the rats in the walls, the disciples of Judas, who multiply with every passing year, sup on the blood of the Lord's children and make a gruesome feast of holy Russia. Who shall deliver us from these parasites, my flock? Who will bear the torch of the true faith and wield the scourge? of Christ to drive out the Jews. The patriarch raised his arms to the heavens, the sweat of adulation dripping into his ashen beard. The vase, my children, his name is unspoken prophecy fulfilled. Constantine reborn, come to deliver holy Russia in, unto salvation. His will and vision, bestowed by the Holy Spirit, will illuminate the path for our brave Christian soldiers. As they sweep aside, there is a... Oh... Pharisaical Bolshevism and liberate our earthly paradise from the minions of the great deceiver. Soon the Lord will smile upon us once more and all creation will know Christ's truth of national socialism. If it gets done, the methodology ma matters not. And we beat him. We beat him. Uh, we got lucky here that these guys cheated did not agree to that. Uh, we got lucky. I'm okay with that type of luck because we're going to core their stuff now. <sighs> very nice. Very, very good. Anything else here? Oh, trans by call. Because you refuse to help the your allies or potential allies earlier, you will be punished, and we're gonna punish you oh so nicely. Cool. Let that go on for now, and then we'll do the heart of darkness, row by row, man by man, from the top of the pot to the bottom. All must be examined. Black shirts, party officials, military officers, cabinet members. All will be given a number and tested. Even those who the Vaz has called friend for years are not free from inspection. The party must be purged of its subversive elements. And if it means that Konstantin Radzewski has to put a bullet in every last traitor skull himself, by God, he will do it. No stone will be left unturned as every party member's loyalty will be tested. Stand up for Russia. Stand up for your nation. Look at your brothers beside you. In them lurks a potential traitor, a Judas to our cause. What do we do to Judas, for the betrayers condemned to an eternity of pain and heck, we too shall condemn them to pain in life. Be ever vigilant and prove your loyalty to the Baz. Make more population, recruitable population factor, recovery, stability, organization, worst work, training time, nice. The budge of the Supreme Council. Once we do this. The Supreme Council met once a day, usually in the morning, seven days a week in the capital of the all-Russian government. The building they met in, a converted hotel, was made to look much grander than what it really was. <clears throat> a giant glowing swastika, akin to the one that Rodzevsky had installed in the RFP building in Mansuli decades ago, had been placed on top of the old hotel, ostensibly. The Supreme Council was a body of government that would determine laws, enforce ordinances, and help guide the Vaz in his quest to reunite Russia, however. To any independent observer, it would seem closer to a king and his court than a council of equals, truthfully. The Supreme Council wielded little power. Most members were the oldest slugs from the RFP. Back when it was an exiled movement in Habin, and for the most part, none of them dared challenge the policies of the Vaz, especially in his current volatile moods. Thus, the Supreme Council was more of Radzewski's echo chamber than an actual functioning arm of the government. That being said, it didn't prevent the paranoid Vaz from thinking that there were dissenters, even among his oldest and trust most trusted advisors. So when the council met this morning, Radzewski, Bolotov, and Okhokhtin looked stood at the end of the conference room and watched as one in every three council members were forced out of their seats by black shirts and arrested for anti-Russian activities. In the coming days, all those arrested would be publicly trialed and hung, their names stricken from the party registry, and their memory buried. Finally, Rodzewski would mention to Bolotov, we've secured the highest echelons of our party's leadership. The security minister tacitly agreed. Of course, my Vaz. They were plotting. I'm glad we were rid of them. Even Bolotov had begun to doubt the extent of his purges. But how long before Rodzewski turned on him? The dissenters won't liquidate themselves. And, and expertise, we're not doing that one yet. Actually, it's going down. I didn't look at this last time, too. Our professionals are going up. Old friends, good. Equipment's going up. We need to do better on poverty. Agriculture's doing well. Economic base is actually going up as well. Very, very good. Uh, do we have something else here? Oh, yeah, we do. Brew relations, arms. I don't mind getting maybe a little bit more trucks as and or artillery. Artillery is not looking good, but it's not too bad. And trucks are... We got more. Okay. Old friends. Molotov checked his watch nervously at red 1.13 a.m. Rumor had it that Rodzewski was typically up at this time, but rarely convened his advisors for any governmental needs. But why has he called me in? Molotov had asked himself as he hurried to the Vaz residence. Had he finally outlived his usefulness? Oh, no. When Bolotov let himself into Rodzevsky's study, he found the vase with a bottle of vodka and a series of documents on his desk. 
Molotov had recognized them immediately. They were the ones that he had given the Vaz the evening prior. He had snuck in with the rest of his reports a dossier about the activities of Lev Ohokten, Rodzevsky's long-term second-in-command. Embezzlement and bribery were the charges leveled upon him, towards him, and a faith, faintfully traceable path of the money was included in the dossier. As Boltov let himself in, Rozdesky didn't even greet him. Is this true, he asked, the tone of his voice evidenced by his exhaustion, but the look in his eyes showed betrayal, but more than that, bloodshot and with bags. The rumors were true, the Vaz was an insomniac, Boltov even tried to feign ignorance. It's what the evidence shows, my boss. I couldn't believe it myself. Love's been stealing from the party for, well, years, maybe. There was a pause. And what of the bribery? Can we look into those who took the money a hooked and offered? Rozevsky asked. The security minister grimaced. Unfortunately, not my boss. You see the names there. Kasov, Kvasov, and Bogachev, both executed for treason the latter last week. Seems like we caught them first. There was a second prolonged silence, both of awkwardly standing in front of Rozevsky's desk. Rozevsky lethargically waved his hand. Dismissed. As Boltov set himself out, the Vaz mind rice could hoped and have hidden this for so long. How could he have done this? Or was this just a play by Boltov to remove the competition? It is time to go to bed. A Hawkton would never do this. Suffer not the traitor. Ooh. Ooh, what do we do here? That is interesting. Well, let's see. A Hawkton would never do this. We have Bolotov, which looks pretty good. I like the daily political power gain. He's a security minister, Prince of Terror. And Steklov. And then I came over here to look at this. Spazovsky? And Hohokten. He's a devoted follower. Hmm. He remained faithful despite the Vaz increasing distance. Ooh. I don't know. I really don't. Suffer not the trip. Is this going to backstab us maybe eventually? <sighs> ah, we'll just... I don't know. Maybe we'll have to come back and do this, but... Test of loyalty. While the idea of testing every single party official's loyalty personally was an appealing concept to Rodzewski, it simply wasn't practical based on how many there were. For anyone else, this would have been a happy problem, but he had other things on his mind instead. The boss has begun to personally devise a loyalty test to weed out traitors and determine who is and who isn't a true member of the RFP. To prevent treason and widespread thoughts, these loyalty tests will be mandatory not just for the new members, but for those who are already in the party as well. Everyone but the Vaz will take them to ensure that the party is pure and free from those who might sympathize with the Whites to the West and the Renegade to the East. I feel like I made a mistake already. Oh boy. Um, it is 63. How was research? Uh, I'm going to start doing some research. Because since we took at least one of these guys, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So, uh, It's not bad. It's 50 PP though. I want to save it for social development though, really. So, not bad. Work will set you free. Work will set you free, frying penance for your sins against our people and against the Vaz. Ooh. Uh, let's go and do this one first. My apologies about that. And there you go. Cool. The amount of traitors and betrayers that have been weeded out of a party have been satisfying to the Vaz, but the great number of them has made their fate of death by hanging or by bullet simply impractical. A number of loyal party members have suggested taking a cue from the Germans. Instead of just simply killing the dissenters, we can have them move to work camps where they will not only learn the consequences of their mistakes under grueling work conditions, but also where they will be able to contribute to our state's eventual victory. For a dead body has to be buried, and a bullet spent for execution. But if a traitor is worked to death, well, his work is his legacy. Nice. Slightly more construction speed. Ooh, that, that's, uh, that goes down. That's not good. No, uh, let's go down. Not good. Go get another city. Oh, hello. Who is this? Cheetah. Oh, Cheetah. You had your chance. You will die now, though. Scavenge for loot. Ensuring loyalty. The Rodzevsk Officers Academy was far from a glorious building. In Zaya, the Vaz was, had put a significant amount of time and money into restoring a building for the RFP's military officers to ensure that they would have a comfortable and prestigious place to train and learn. However... Its sister complex in the Vaz hometown was a far cry from Zaya. A two-story converted schoolhouse, it was used both for official RFP duties as well as for the training and drilling of local officers before they were sent off to the fronts. One such use for the building was the implementation of the loyalty test that Rozevsky came himself came up with. In a classroom, about 30 members of the party were crammed into small desks to take the tests, from novice blacksmiths to the aging Orthodox priests. It seemed that anyone even remotely tied to the regime was preparing to write the tests. At the front of the classroom, a grim-looking blackshirt, perhaps in his late fifties, stood, his sidearm intentionally very visible. He barked the instructions for the test as if they were slaves in a labor camp rather than party officials. You get one hour. You must answer all questions posed. No questions are to be asked to either your neighbors or to me. Anyone caught cheating or attempting to cheat will be punished in a harsh manner. When you are done, bring your paper up to the front. After that, you will leave. Do not wait around. You may start. Little did most of the test takers know, but the very man giving the tests in the first place just passed his the day before. 
Flying colors, of course, as that is what the Vaz demanded out of each and every person who is associated with the party, for those who do not perform up to the standards set. Consequences range from being stripped of their title and party role to being sent to the forced labor camps for the fear of traitors. As Rozevsky would go on to comment to his Supreme Council, all this to ensure the security of the party. Why is this pencil so dull? Because people have been using it all day. Cool. Um, a lot of you guys said that actually Konstantin Rozevsky has really, really good um, character development. Some of the best in TNL, so I'm really excited for that. So thank you for leaving that comment because I'm excited. I'm a little more excited because he there does seem like there can be, so... I'm excited for what this campaign will be. Also, someone also said there's not that many campaigns on a mirror on uh, YouTube, or even BitChute, or whatever. So, I'm glad to be playing it, and I know there's not a lot, but there are a few out there. Additionally, someone asks when I'll do the Free Russian Republic when? Probably eventually. Eventually. No guarantees when, but eventually. And someone also asks if I can do Goring. Yes, I do want to do Goring as well, but we'll get there. And, uh... Someone says he he or she hates fascism. What? We love fascism here. We love dudism, right? The one true Vaz. Hang the worst and work the rest to death was a suggestion made by the Vaz second in command, Lev Ohokton. With the forest labor camps now open and the worst of the worst rooted out and hung, the party is finally secure. Known in whispers between top members who survived the purges as a bloody affair, it has become apparent that the party has since been purged not of actual traitors, but those who posed a direct threat to Rodzewski himself. The only top party officials that disappeared were those who had never been vocal in their opposition to the RFP's leader, which may believe not to be a coincidence. Regardless, there is more, no more competition for the position of party leadership. No, at least within Rodzewski's realm. There is and can only be one true Vaz, Konstantin Rodzewski. And the Vaz secure. And remove the paranoia of the Vaz, we get more political power, division organization, uh, division recovery rate, stability, and more support for a whole year. Oh, it goes away eventually? Oh, that sucks. Oh, we also have heirs of Hobbin, which is good. The Russian fascist stronghold, which is nice. That looks good. Blackshirt field divisions, I do like that. Defensive readouts, I like that as well. And Japanese researchers, as well as what? Advisors, corporate state is nice. Secret police is very good. Hey, they went to war with us. Port of Magadan. Not that. And purging them is not great, but whatever. And paranoia? Oh, that hurts our population. No wonder we always have zero. Jesus Christ. I thought they wanted to attack us. Hello? Can we actually win here, maybe? 4v2, a silver lining in the death of stars. Pushkin's days were all the same, and the sun beating down on his body, and then the cold whipping a frenzy of pain against his limbs and torso, seeping into his lungs. He had forgotten where and exactly he was brought to this camp, a month, two, four? He never had access to a clock, and the days all felt the same, and his muscles kept deteriorating. He felt like he would have gone insane at some point. There was something keeping him grounded, however, or rather, someone. The boy snapped back to rea snapped him back to reality, and he felt his arms tired and carrying the barrel. Focusing again, he could make it out as Ilyanov. Ilyanov. Turning to face the man, they exchanged warm smiles, and Pushkin felt immediately better. Hello, Ilyanov, he said, beginning to push a barrel. How are you? How am I? I he asked, letting out a chuckle. Ilyanov was thin, almost weary, but he wasn't starved. Pushkin found that an attractive trait amongst many in him. I should ask you that question. Come on. Cheer up. We'll get out of this prison and make something of our lives. Pushkin's breathing became a little bit awkwardly paced. Did you say our? Ilyanov's eyes narrowed and he gave a slight smile. I don't have to repeat myself, you know. In fact, he began walking closer and deciding to chat with Pushkin to pass the time until guard noticed him. It was your idea to begin with. A nice cabin out in the woods of Siberia. You always wanted to be a hunter. Pushkin gave a bit of a shaky grin. Well, I did say that, didn't I? But he looked around the camp once again. It was a, it was of a dreadful atmosphere. All Pushkin and Ilyanov wanted to do were escape, but they were wise enough not to be filled with bullets. I hope liberation comes sooner rather than never. Oh boy. An iron grip. From the Steno Stenovoy range in the north to the Amur River in the south, our Vaz Konstantin Rozevsky has asserted his control throughout the land. He has reforged the economy along a corporate line, controlled the military, and purged the party of its dissidents. It's clear that the Rozevsky now reigns, undisputed, as the Vaz of the Russian state ready to assert his control over the Far East. With the position of our Vaz secured, it seems that his paranoia is slowly fading in the fiery passionate ideologue that once uh, molded the Russian fascist party to his ideals and drew thousands of followers as it's beginning to reemerge. Now, we can finally focus on dealing with the renegade in the east and the false Tsar in the west. Hail Russia, hail the Vaz, as we shall punish traitors to our state. This general kind of sucks. Konstantin Agiv? He do be sucking. Uh, how would you guys just do that? What's wrong with me? Since we'll get some other guys to help out as well. Hopefully you guys can move fa in fast enough. Especially that motorized. Come on, motorized. Uh, 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 come on. Okay. 
Can you move into there, maybe? Uh, no, no, I want you to go here. Oh, is that all in one giant? Oh, I guess it is one, all one giant tile. That sucks. It's all right. There you go. If you can encircle them, that'd be delightful. Because now they're going to die. And they... Oh, hello. You like to attack me on... Okay, well, go ahead. An iron grip. Thank you very much. Hail to the Vaz. After the purge of the Supreme Council, the Vaz had a vested interest in ensuring that the governing body of his all-Russian seat was back up to full strength. A series of names were put forward by both the remaining members of the Supreme Council, as well as Bolotov himself. Each of them vetted carefully for potential loyalty issues, as well as examinations of their past actions as members of the Russian fascist party. Name by name was eliminated from the list. Andreev had a history of minor insubordination. Viktorov had too many friends in low places. And Izaev wasn't just really liked by the rest of the council. These were just a few examples. Eventually, however, a series of names were chosen. Loyal, skilled, and fanatical were the trio of traits that were de the decision was ultimately based on. The new Supreme Council, between the survivors of the Purge and the new members, had become an incredibly loyal institution to the Razevsky. In reality, little more than an echo chamber for his thoughts and direction. Repeat after me. I believe in the one God. I promise to serve the one true Vaz, and I will do so loyally and with complete faith and confidence in his decisions and beliefs. I believe in the Russian fascist party and its ability to unite all Russians under one banner for God, nation, and labor. The ceremony for swearing in the Supreme Council was unannounced to the public and remained an austere occasion. Undertaken in the early morning, little decoration or celebration was given, but as Rozevsky had finished confirming each new member of the council, he gave them a tricolored sash of black, gold, and white adorned with a single iron swastika. A short, curt welcome and congratulations were given by the Vaz before instructing them where they needed to sit and the various responsibilities that they would need to fulfill for their position. As the ceremony wound down, the morning ceremony progressed into a standard daily meeting of the Supreme Council. The new members, led by the old, filed into the conference room where the Vols took his place at the head of the council. Sitting in his chair, he looked over his new council, their loyalty secured. Shall we begin, he asked, already knowing the answer, right back to it. Also, that is one thing I do want to address that I didn't say yet. Um, these guys are killing themselves. We love it. Uh, it was the first video of this campaign, so monetized. And at least at the time of this recording, at about 7.30 o'clock at night... Yes, it is. And Hitler's dead. Goodbye, Hitler. Goodbye. Very good. Hopefully we keep... Oh, that's good. We, uh, we were all probably 0%, maybe. Wow, that's really bad. Yeah, let's let them attack us. Let them weaken themselves. Those disgusting selves. Um, you know, I'm going to grab some artillery. It's not that bad. We can spend the PP for it. And then, let's see. It's hard to kind of see what this is all about. So you guys are there. Uh, the middle is kind of difficult to take out. I think we'll probably wrap around the southern portion here, maybe? Even though they're looking a little bit weaker on the left side. You can't tell right now, but the, my mouse wheel is spinning. Okay, there we go. Cool. Mm hmm. Actually, we're going to attack here first, since this one doesn't even reach over there, so that'll be good. Can you win? I hope you can. That's going to be very, very needed for us to move down here. Cool. Ah, and the world is falling apart. Pot. Beautiful. And you should be able to win pretty easily. Good. Chaos and Austin, very good. An iron grip. Oh, and there's so, some more lag. Okay, there you go. Ah, oh, more lag. The Vaz speech. With the free all-Russian army marching forward and the domestic enemies lying behind, the all-Russian government has become fully prepared for the unification or reunification campaigns ahead. It is an unfortunate fact that when the first states to stand in the way of our mission are our former anti-communist allies, but at the same time, the incoming humiliating defeat will solidify our image as a legitimate bearer of the white cause and will eliminate the last nest of the white resistance against the fascist cause as loyal soldiers prepare their arms. The party statesmen actively organize the war effort, and the Russian workers are toiling in the factories and manufactories, Vaz Razevsky prepares for his speech and the capital to identify our goals and inspire the Russian warriors. This day will mark the revival of the anti-Bolshevik crusade, slightly interrupted by traitors, and the reunification of the far Russian Far Eastern anti-Bolshevik front under the banner of the swastika. A quiet night. The Russian Fascist Party's capital, Zay, had long been the hub of the Vaz's fervent purges from the top to the bottom of both the party and the wider urban society as a whole. For weeks, the city had been bustling. Not only were people going about their standard lives, but also had attended show trials, watched the executions of traitors, and snitched on their neighbors and loved ones. 
The past few weeks have been hard on everybody, and the fanatical pace at which both the purges and the subsequent executions had taken clearly had inflicted a collective toll on the capital's population. No more evident was this fact than in Konstantin Fedorov, a minor party official that had only nearly escaped persecution himself by turning in his brother Alexei for the anti-Russian activities. Fedorov had been working late shifts to process extra paperwork, effectively pushing pencils for higher-ups who couldn't be bothered. It was often said that the Russian fascist party was a living, breathing thing and people like Fedorov were what kept it alive. Regardless, Fedorov had, with some skill, some betrayal, and a lot of luck, avoided the purges, and he wasn't exactly sure how he did, or nor how he felt about it. Fedorov walked to his stand after walk, or after work, walked back to the measly apartment that he shared with his deceased brother's wife and daughter, neither of whom knew that it had been Fedorov who had given him over to the party. Up one street, to the left, crossed the street, and Fedorov found himself on the final stretch home, past the Zaya Gallows. He distinctly remembered how, at the very center of the town, near the gallows, there seemed to be a persistent din, cheering, jeering, screaming gunshots. He had become so used to it that the first thing he noticed that while walking past the gallows was a complete silence. No one in the square, no one to be seen in the evening twilight, with what little light was left supplemented by the town's streetlights. Fedorov did something that he had not done in weeks. He stopped, and he listened. A smile crept across the junior bureaucrat's face, silence complete and utter quiet. As if a giant boulder had been released from his shoulders, Fedorov felt free. Were the purges over for good? Who cared, thought Fedorov, for right now he was free, free from guilt, free from threat. He offered a prayer to God before walking the rest of his way home, a skip and a step. Is the nightmare finally over? Oh, it is just merely beginning, and we can't wait to experience it, right? Amen. The Warsaw Uprising. Hmm. We'll see about that. English Civil War begins. Not bad. Get in there, boys. Hidden heroes. Oh, we have to cross the river. But so do they, so that's not good. Oh, boy. That is unfortunate. Hold them for now. Alright, so they're done attacking. We gotta get these divisions out of there. Are they gonna Let them shift around first. That's fine. Let them shift around. Let us get our soldiers some more strength as well. Uh, actually, I don't want this division. I don't want these two divisions. Switch them around. At this point, if we cannot strike over there, wow, that looks like really bad. It's alright, though. South African War, so be it. 1v1, you can't win there, but okay. You guys. Uh, I don't want to push them in, because that would just be very bad. So, you guys are going to begin the attack, and you can support the attack. And we just got to keep pushing in. It's unfortunate. Oh, they're attacking us too. Look at that. Oh, we could have gone up there, I guess. Oh, uh, whatever. Push in, because fighting over the river sucks, and then we can go up to Borzi. Borzia. Ah, uh, the Vos speech, my friends. So, if you want to read about the Reckoning, please go right ahead. Thus, unto traitors, expand the dockyards. Down with the false star, we have to be at peace for that, but expand the dockyards. If you could ever compliment the Renegade on something other than his collection of insolent traits that could be even embodied in a single person, it is his sense for commerce and usury, for the money given to him by his Jewish patrons. He used every opportunity in the poor region of Russia and managed Magadan as a relatively prominent port city in the shores of the Pacific, a jewel among the frozen wastes that attracts all kinds of unsavory people from America. All those mercenaries and rentiers escaped Magadan as soon as it fell to us, and we will not miss them. What matters for us, though, is that Magadan remains in a decent condition to expand our influence on the ocean. Using the assets left by Matkovsky and his gang of traders, we can repurpose the ports of the city for our own goals, expanding it to attract the goods flowing from the eastern coast and reconnect it with the trade network of the Empire of the Rising Sun, making it an additional link between our two proud nations. But the Vaz's speech. We must combat the influence of the communists and the Jew wherever we find it. We must systematically purge the rot of Bolshevism from throughout our people and throughout our nation, or we will not stand to ever become a real power, instead becoming a country fit for only the lowliest of the world powers to tread upon. There are obstacles to our vision, but even the most insurmountable odds will not stop us when we have the power of the Slav, of our God, and the greatest of fighting wills. Remember the Battle of Neva, where us Russians were faced against insurmountable odds and still triumphed. These were men motivated by God and nation, but had no knowledge of our cause. Think of what you, my soldiers, can achieve if we harness the power of our forefathers showed decades ago. Forwards, my brave men, and prepare for conflict with those who once may have called brothers. <clears throat> For to defeat the Bolshevik and the Jew, we must first defeat the seditious traitors and renegades who took action against our movement. For God, nation, and labor, 
Today, the boss, Konstantin Rodzewski, gave a rousing and impassioned speech in the capital and Zaya, followed by a grand military parade that featured both the regular armed forces and the paramilitary black shirts marching interlocked with one another, as well as a ceremonious lighting of a number of effigies of the false star and the renegade in Magadan. The speech was incredibly well received, and even amongst the most common of the folk were politely asked about it. The speech was even broadcasted across the airwaves and in an increasingly incredibly rare move, also televised to the few Russians who had a TV, the work which would then become known as a Zaya balcony speech, roused the armed forces and officially announced Rozevsky's intentions to reclaim the total leadership of the Russian fascist party and end the false Tsar's farcical regime in Chita, compared to the state that the Vols had been in not a year prior. To see him reinvigorated and once again passionate against his enemies assuaged the fears of many in the black shirts and the military who began to doubt his competency for leadership following his slide into paranoia to wall my friends and get some free manpower we need that immediately good 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 immediately go south keep these soldiers in place do not let them move go 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 good I need you to move around we're gonna go all the way up to cheetah oh you wanted to attack us no 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 no, no. not today We've lost about we've lost quite a few five thousand fifty. Well, we've killed off twenty thousand, so four v one is not too bad. The gods of the north. Oh, that is not good. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. May God welcome this wayward soul. That is not good. I want you to help out right here because we gotta hurry this up, and they should be defeated very soon. Good. You will not attack us here and win. Attacking over the river sucks, but that is okay. Strong infantry. That's what we need. Strong, strong infantry. Come on. We got it. Push over and into Cheetah. Expand the docks, my friends. Thus unto traitors. The strain of fascism propagated by Matkovsky and his adherents was never intended to be an essence of the actual fascist ideals, but rather a puny substitute of it for the complacent gentry who realize the inevitability of the fascist age but try to adjust the ideology to their needs, without asking of themselves the discipline and ideological fervor required for every self-conscious fascist. Matkovsky's kosher fascism was always intended to be an inherently anti-Russian force to decimate the fascist movement from the inside and should be treated as such, leaving no room for its further spreading, with Magadan finally in her hands. We can bring justice to Matkovsky and his clique of despicable traitors ever since the day of infamy. We have remembered every single name of those who fled, and we will offer no forgiveness for their crimes against the motherland. We cannot, but the party reunited as well. Now that we have dealt with the rump white movement in Chidev and the cursed renegade in Magadan, the Russian fascist party has been reunited under its singular banner, that of the Vaz, Konstantin Rozevsky. While this has been a long time coming, and depending on who you ask, inevitable, our Vaz, finally clear-headed after the conquest of his rivals and the purge of his internal enemies, has planned a diatribe against the Soviet successor states to the west and the bandits to our north. All of these statements stand in the way of the liberated United Russia, led by the benevolent and powerful Rozevsky. Never forget the harsh betrayal of our people by the communists, working with the subversive elements of society. They effectively emasculated the Russian people and made us the dogs of foreign powers. We must reclaim our place in the world stage for God, nation, and labor. Integrate the generals. That's actually really cool. That's actually really good. We can use more generals. Why not? You can help out here, too. Kill. Kill them. Kill every single last one of them. And you should honestly be in there by now. That's good. 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 Are they all attacking? No, they're not. Two divisions here are good. Keep them here. Help them out. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? Hold. You all hold. Why not? Because you are going to go down here, and you, except for you, are going to attack right there. I'm going to bunch them up and kill them all off. Line them up on the wall and kill every single last one of them. Because then there's only two tiles, and they're one, two, three, and they'll go push into here or here. Doesn't matter to me. Either one. Good. Immediately begin assaulting. Because they're attacking us as well, so that's good. They're doubly weakening themselves. Nice. Go in as well. No peace with these guys. That's under traitors. The party reunited. The traitors lot. There's nothing worse than betrayal. I'd rather consider my own death than betrayal, but yet, that's what I've been dealt. 
and as such, I must react accordingly. I hereby condemn you, Mikhail Alexeyevich Matkovsky, the worst of the betrayers of the renegade of Magadan, to death. Ever since the collapse of Matkovsky's regime and his subsequent capture by Razevsky's loyalists, the renegade remained nearly completely silent all throughout his imprisonment and torture. He would not even admit his crimes, splitting the party, anti-Russian activities, breaches of morality, and decency either under duress or on the stand, it's clear that he's guilty, of course. But he hasn't playing into the show that Razevsky was hoped he would be put on. Regardless, the execution would go forward to... Or go forward, it would have to. It must. The central square of Zaya, once the market that had since been transformed into the town's gallows for all of the Vaz's ideological enemies, had been packed with a number of black shirts and senior members of the RFP. Each one had been picked based on the relation to the party and Matkovsky himself, that they had either known him directly or had been affected by the fallout of his splitting of the party. Losing friends or family to the split and subsequent purges on all sides resulted in dozens of members of the RFP being more than happy to attend the execution. As Matkovsky was brought up to the gallows, jeers and insults were hurled at him by the crowd, all of whom had been roused to believe that the man was responsible for their hardships. Once he was brought up, Rodzievsky himself was waiting there to greet him. Looking down directly in the eye, the boss asked him, any last words? Silence followed as Mikoski stared back, awkward seconds passing by. Frustrated by his silence, Rodzievsky threw a punch, landing on the captain's, captive's cheek. He spat a single word at Mikoski, dude. Turning to the ex executioner, uh, he gave the, him the actual command. Thus ended the split, and end fit for a traitor. Now, we gotta move quickly here, and if they wanna start moving, I'm gonna go ahead and start attacking here and pinning them, these guys down. Nope. Force it. We get Cheetah. We get Cheetah. Doesn't matter what the cost is. We capture the base and do the lottery about that. Please go right ahead. They are done. We have done it, my friends. It was costly. It was incredibly costly, but it had to be done. Are we lacking? No, we are lacking nothing. Down with the false star. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. But the mines of Nechinsk. Not bad. Minus 10% consumer goods factories. Holy cow. Wow, with the recent conquest, the New Horizons appeared for our manufacturers. After the downfall, the mockery of a Russian monarchy in Cheetah, the abandoned and utter and treated mind of Nachinsk was uncovered. Although neither Mikhail nor the Soviet authorities paid attention to it, it still contains a deposit of gold and silver ore that were mined since the imperial times but were forgotten about during the chaos that engulfed Russia after the disgraceful defeat at the hands of the Germans. As we have little natural deposits in our own lands, and the demands of our industry for resources increases, we can expand our mining operations towards Nechinsk and restore the mountainous district that once belonged to the Imperial family. As Nechinsk was suitable to be a designated Katara, Katorga location under the Tsars, we can employ the traitorous laborers from Amur to work on those mines. Yes, a thousand times yes. In Yakutsk, you are next. Because we might just be able to beat them up. Oh, the Saka Republic. Oh, Bratia. Oh, this is not good. Our, our position is not good. We need more manpower. We're done. Oh, we're not done mobilizing, actually. That's really good, then. Um, Yeah. Asano's nice and all, but these guys... They're actually 20 combo with, so that's actually really good. Oh, get that support already. We gotta get that support already on there. Anything else? Now we're kind of okay. We'll train one. Six divisions is not bad. Yeah, we're not strong. They're not strong, so it is what it is. We're currently still high relations. That's good. The party reunited. Glorious, my friends. The mines, though. The mines are a column. Deal with the pretender, though. There could be no per person more a caricature to sit on the Russian throne as Mikhail Alad Andreevich Romanov. <clears throat> Himself almost a commoner by birth, he was never raised to be a sovereign of Russia and was never prepared for a long time being satisfied with his philistine and careless life in Australia. Only the Lord himself knows what brought his mind to get involved in her affairs with the white generals and why Semenyov and his gang would ever acknowledge him as their sovereign. Left without puny standards of legitimacy in his grim, gim, gimcrack throne, the disgraced Tsar was left as a human trophy for us and his fate is now fully in our hands. We will not accept any indulgence and liberties from the man who headed our enemies, even considering his foolishness and ignorance. Romanov can be judged by only a national fascist trial, and only one degree of punishment can be applied against him. After this, we're going to keep doing the land auction and more gun stuff. We need it. Letter of peace tribute? So be it. You have chosen Poli. You remind me of Goebbels. Yori Vit... Vitvitsky? Nice. Deal with the pretender. 
and then embrace the monarchists. Although we were separated by different sides of the barricades in the aftermath of the Renegade's betrayal, most of the RFP members and white officers could not help themselves but feel nostalgic for the times when the Russian fascists and monarchist officers stood for a common cause in Habin. For a short period, the sentiment died out immediately as the war raged between us and the Tsarists, but quickly regained its strength in the joy of the victors and the woes of the defeated. Either in fear of punishment or genuine epiphany, more and more monarchist officers became supportive of the ideas of fascism, acknowledging its righteous succession to the white cause, the banner of which they end their ancestors carried during the Russian Civil War. Although we remain suspicious of their motives, we will accept their service to the Russian state. Not only will they provide us with their military prowess, but their status among the Russian, former Russian Asian exiles will enforce our image as a legitimate Russian anti-communist force. Get more organization. Do they have only one division? They might only have one. The sins of our roots. Oh no, they, uh, they literally only have one. The Lord's word is what we deserve. If you like to read about that, please go ahead. This happens whenever we're playing the Far East with these guys up here. So it is what it is. Uh, like I said, this is going to... Oh, we have a lot of PP. Raid successful. Seize all that we can use. Absolutely. Oh, look at that. 355. Love is so strong on attack. I like that. I want a really heavy attacker. You are okay. I want more attack, though. Pavlov? Alexander Pavlov. Very good. The spoils of war. What's not to love? This will help out in the future. Good. But we are looking incredibly weak. Mm. Once we get this place cored, though, that'll be very good, though. And how much mo longer do we have to wait? Oh, a little more than a month. That is not ideal. But embrace the monarchist very soon. And the 30-year wait ends. Oh, wow. More recovery rate, stability, war support, production capacity. The Broken Crown. Oh, hello. Mandate of Siberia. No, I don't think we will give up our loot. The Broken Crown. Traitor. Pretender. Dude. These were some of the kinder terms being yelled at, at Mikhail Andreevich Romanov as he was being led up to the Zaya Gallows. Placed in the center of the town, the gallows had been once the location of the town's market, but had been repurposed once Rozevsky's terror started. There are a piece of officials that packed the square with black shirts and peasants with the promise of a banquet afterwards, in celebration of the death of the false star. The crowd's, crowd's mood has gone from quietly excited to raucous with the arrival of Mikhail and his escorts of black shirts, despite having been dressed up in his star's regalia for the execution. Uh, oh. Oh, despite having been wearing prison clothes for most of the time in the city, he'd been dressed up in his Tsar's regalia for the execution. It appears as if the disposed royal had aged considerably since his capture, the Black Church forced a path through the crowd and curbed the worst of the physical abuse that was being hurled at Mikhail, who was being propelled forward, a Black Church grasping each of his arms and forcing him to walk. The entire journey to the gallows, through the crowd, the false star protested, begged for mercy, and pleaded with his escorts to let him go. This only played into the showiness of the event, and caused surges of excitement amongst the younger blackshirts who were accosting him. As he was led up to the gallows, alongside the executioner was the RFP appointed Patriarch of the Orthodox Church of the East and the Vaz himself. The Patriarch performed the last rites and performed a prayer for Mikhail's soul in the afterlife. Razevsky remained silent the entire time watching the process and reveling in the scene that Mikhail was making for himself. As he was being prepared to be hung, the executioner asked if he had any last words. Tearfully, the false star said, I never wanted any of this, please, just I want to go home. The gallows were dropped and Mikhail's death signaled the end of the Eastern Monarchist movement. May he find a home in the afterlife. See, do selected, huh? So be it. Got to keep an eye on this. 10 days, 11 days, not bad. Not bad. The Vals secured. Nice. Iberia can contain, gets control of Algeria. So be it. Alright, are the soldiers ready to go? Are they all stable, ready to go? No, they're not. We have to wait till the last second to give them a response. But we'll grab more loot, we shall. Two more days. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, crap. Barathe is doing that. At least we're fighting over river. Enemies defeated. As they should be. Alright, so this is going to not be easy against Baratia. Pavlov. Hookton. Uh, I want some more balance under a Russell. Why not? My hope, my goal is for us to, or at least for this one, to go here. Let's say there's no river there and come up here and circle them and destroy them. We have to move fast. We have to move very, very fast. Come on, let us... Get Cheetah done. Oh, they, they go to war on them. That's good. Hopefully they go to war with Yakutia before us. Oh, that's not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Let's get... Go, 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 go. What the hell are you doing, son? 
and Bresomonicus, the 30 year wait ends. 30 years, so much time it took for the Russian fascist party to emerge as an independent sovereign force in Russia, with which both friends and enemies reckon. The Russian fascist party came from humble origins in the days of 1931 when Bukharin only consolidated his reign. A boy from Blagoveshensk and like minded youth decided to found a political organization in the Halbin inspired after the greatest examples provided by Mussolini and Hitler. Our enemies derided us, and they saw us hopeless dreamers and merciless thugs, but who lasts, lasts. We fought and provided our might, and proved our might, accomplishing what even the most venerable white emigrant could only dream of, standing as a sole anti-communist force. We can now turn our eyes at the Soviet remnants in the West and their puny breakaways. Whether Yagoda lost his grip on the domain or not, the fight against him or his successors will be a glorious one indeed. Nice. Come on, come on. Every second you wait to get down there, there's a second that we will not be entrenched. Ready to go. Strike at the Nazi? Well, let's see what's going on with Soblin here. Only 2,000 manpower, so he's not that much more ahead. And he has no motorized. That is good. He has 9,000 manpower. Oh, crap. And here we go. We're literally not even down here yet. Are they moving in yet? No, that's good. Uh, you might have to do this, do that, and then go there. Yeah, I might just have to. Do not give up, Cheetah. For the love of God, can we core this fast enough? Come on. Why does it take so long to core? It takes way too long to core, man. Where are the motorized? Why are you taking so long? You should have gone there by now. Come on. Ooh, we're barely going to win that battle. Oh, this is so not good. It's the end of the South African War. That's not good. You guys actually move up. That's good. They're attacking us. We're attacking them. That's good. Ah, uh, Baratia. Oh, Baratia. We should be able to get there before they do because they have to go over the river, which is good, good, good. Nice. They've been defeated. Hopefully we can destroy that division up there. These guys are so incredibly weak. It is not good. Go and hold for now. Go and hold. That motorized. I don't know what they were thinking. But this is unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable by the motorized. That is that is pathetic. That is just really pathetic. Were we able to court at least? Uh, it looks like we can. Agricultural methods are next. <sighs> we can do that one. It's fine. All alone. It was late, but how late? Rodzewski wasn't sure. He only knew that was his security minister, Boltov, and a pair of Supreme Council members had insisted on meeting with him to brief him on the status of the party's reception in Cheetah, the new city newly liberated from the monarchists, but his head wasn't in the right place to receive the sort of news they were offering. Eyes normally looking at reports, but glazed over. The Vaz politely listened to the groups before dismissing them once he was sure that they had finished. As they filed out of the room, Rodzewski turned his entire attention to what was first on his mind. The past decade of his life, from a fiery preacher-esque figure in Habin, to the warlord of a pseudo Statelet in the Amur region, and finally his triumph over his enemies and the reunification of the Russian fascist party. But he remembered too quite well, a time when his enemies were not enemies at all, in fact. <clears throat> He had even called some of them friends. The atmosphere of Habin and the scarcity of resources in the struggle made cooperation between the whites and the fascists, both pragmatic and fanatically ideological, absolutely necessary. There were always arguments, but they were both good and bad times. Sharing dinner in vodka with Ataman Semenyov, for example, or drunkenly belting out white army songs with Matkovsky from his balcony into the chilly Manchurian night. Rozevsky remembered, if only for a brief minute, that his friends turned enemies were more than just targets, they were humans. After all the work that the Vaz went through, all the painstaking measures to dehumanize his enemies, he couldn't shake the fact that they were, after all, people. People with some of whom he had once shared real connections with, he sighed, and glanced at the report left on his desk by Bolotov. Humans may be, Rodzevsky thought, but still traitors. The Vaz was with a strong mental push, dismissed his thoughts and reminiscences, and picked up the report. He read it every word, in fact, and found it satisfying. Look at how far we've come, he muttered to himself, reminiscing on the past quickly transitioned into preparing for the future. He dropped the report on his desk, stood, and walked to the map of the Russian Far East he had put up on the wall in his office, pondering his next move. Another sleepless night. Begin the liberation, though. With the internal traitors from our original vision forged and Halbin finally dealt with, we can begin to look towards our ultimate goal, the unification of a strong Russia under the benevolent rule of the Vaz. The collapse of the Bolsheviks gave us an opportunity, but it also caused the rise of a number of equally detestable successor states. Paramount among them, Yagoda's administration in Irkutsk and the uneducated Siberian natives to the north and Yakutia. Now that Rodzewski's Russian fascist party has consolidated itself, we can work towards marching west, our proud fascist banners emblazoned with a symbol of our people flapping proudly in the Siberian wind from Amur to Arkhangelsk, one small step at a time for God, nation, and labor. My apologies about that, but let's see if we can actually do well against Baratia. Oh, Salvin, Salvin, Salvin. We're actually doing okay against these guys. These guys are, oh, 
they're starting to lose some strength, even though we're really not that strong. My gosh, these trucks just don't want to move. Oh, we lost... Oh, that's not good. Curse our foes. That is... Well, we lost Cheetah. God dang it. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They had up to like maybe five divisions. How do they keep spawning more? What the heck? Oh my goodness. This truck. Okay, the officers here who lead this truck division are all going to be shot as soon as possible. As soon as this war's over, they're all literally. I'm just. I'm getting rid of them. How dare you take this long to do jack squat? How absolutely dare you? Oh god, they're going in circles here, aren't they? Oh, that is not good. Oh boy. Uh, they go over there. We still have, technically have a connection. Oh, this is not good. 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 Good. Not good. You gotta move your chubby little legs faster than this, boys. Oh my God. Um, we gotta pull out. Go back, cheetah. No, no, no. Go this way. Go this way. Go this way. Oh my goodness, this is stupid. Yeah, this motorized division literally is costing us the entire war right now. We got the airbase back, which is nice, but. Yeah, they're going to be more than dead by the time we're, we're done with them. More than dead. Absolutely more than dead. Hello. And you guys got, got to keep moving up north. You will not encircle us, you pieces of garbage. You will not. Uh, I'll send you guys this way, actually. Do this, we can encircle them as well. And we got to encircle ourselves. God dang it. Keep these guys in place. I need you to go there. Come on, come on. God dang it, this stupid motorized division. I'm blaming this all on the motorized division. It is their fault for the failures. Good. Get down there. Completely kill these divisions off. How dare you, Soblin. How absolutely dare you. You are not moving. You are, I swear to God, you're not moving. These divisions will die here no matter what. We lost the airbase again. God, I, I'd hate to be whoever works at that airbase. Always getting taken out. Always, 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 always. The shield broken. That's good. Help kill them off. Kill every single last one of them off. Come on, move. There you go. We got him. Hold, because... Oh, baby, that's not good. This is not good. We're moving into there, which is not bad. We actually might be able to encircle that division and kill them off. You know, I do want to send the tanks, the tanks, the motorized down here too. Oh, we actually might be able to move fast enough, maybe. There you go. Move down, move down, because we gotta encircle these guys and kill them off as well. Because we have a time limit. Unfortunately, we have a severe time limit, which is that of my God. You guys take forever. Um, no, stay there. Uh, you guys got... Mm, just get to a line. I hate these stupid motorized. This is the bread and butter of our army. And they choose to be stupid. They just choose to be stupid. Why? Why? I mean, you, you can choose to be smart, but the commanders are dumb. Dumb as, all, dumb as rocks. Dumb as rocks. Alright, so they're going to move in. That's fine. Because we're going to kill them right here. My god. Okay, so what is going on with Soblin here? How can he make this many divisions? He should have, like, no equipment. After fighting Baratia? Or no, he's Baratia, but fighting Yagoda? No way, man. Um, that sucks. We'll move in there. Ah, you hold. Just wait. Actually, you know what? Screw it. You guys are coming this way. Alright, so we might actually be able to come over here and circle and destroy them. So maybe we could try that. Get over there. You guys keep these guys in place. You might do well, you might not. Doesn't matter to me right now. And you guys just hold on for now and get over there. Oh, I don't care about England right now. Go there, go there. Do we have another division finally? Thank God. <laughs> Alright, we do. That's good. That is good. At least we have one more division. If you can't win over there, that's totally okay. And don't worry about making another division because we have no manpower. Good. Alright, move up, move up, move up. Kill them off. Division, one at a time. Good, and kill them off. My god, this is insane. Uh, go and hold, and hold as well. I want you to come up here, I want you to come up here as well. Come on. 
This is just stupid. Yeah. Nerf, please. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Yeah, I'll still send them down there. We can circle that division destroy it, probably. That'll be good. Mm. We're going to need more encirclements. This is not good. And we've lost 3,000. We've killed off way too many of them for to have this many divisions here. This is ridiculous. This is honestly ridiculous. Um, yeah, maybe not move. Yeah, let them, let them take that. That's fine for now. You guys move into here. See what you can do. Go up that way. You guys help out. Keep them in place. While we move up north. Well, you guys are just kind of stuck there. That's fine for now. So you guys should be able to move fast enough to actually move there. Oh, we cut them off potentially. Potentially. Good. Good. It's all about killing off the enemy divisions right now. Kill, 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 kill. And you guys move up there. Take that territory. Take all of that territory. You should be already halfway there. Um, as long as they're not trying to encircle us, that's the most important thing. Especially with that motorized. Nice, good. You're not going to get circled yourself, which is awesome. Oh, I don't care about him or Ryan. I really don't care. Oh, this is not good. Looks like they're just swapping positions, which is fine with me. Um, go straight on in. Go straight on in. Kill every last one of them off. Not a single survivor. Oh, even those guys are looking pretty bad. Are they moving in? Oh, nope. All right. Actually, if they're both here, we might be able to do some cheeky stuff. Drive those tanks or those those trucks into the river if we have to. I don't care. Move, 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 move. Come on. My god, they took so long to kill. Oh, are you kidding me? No, 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 no. Kill them all off. Virgin Supreme Council is gone. The words Lord, the words word for all to hear. As heaven's hymns we sing. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're not ready for this. We can't do anything because of the stupid motorized earlier. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. How does Salvin have that many divisions? How? How? What a bunch of BS. That's complete BS. All right, just gotta go. You gotta go, 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 go. Force all you guys to go right now. We we don't have time for this at all. Do not let them leave. Go, 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 for the love of God. Good, kill every single last one of them off. Go, 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 go. I don't care if we get in circle with the motorized, it doesn't matter. As long as we can take the stuff, that's the most important thing. You find them, you kill them. That's your job. Alright, so make sure these guys cannot encircle us right now. Because the only thing we've got right now. Oh, crap. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? That's so stupid. We get screwed over because of Baratia. Soblin, you've killed off so many people already. Why? Who put him in charge? I'm so pissed off at him right now. I'll get better artillery. That'll be good. Thank God we have some motorized divisions actually doing stuff here. Um, actually, keep going, though. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No stopping here. Like, we can't even do the, any of this stuff over here. Because it's so bad right now. This is god-awful. That's nice. Can we capitulate him? We have to capitulate him right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. How is that not enough? How? What the hell is this about? Thank God. This is so dumb. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry I'm, I'm raging and stuff like this right now, but this is stupid. This is honestly extremely stupid. This war should not have gone like this at all. Get your butts over here right now. Oh, man. This is not good. Uh, buy more guns. That'd be probably good to do. Oh, that, that's just incredibly stupid. Incredibly stupid. I'm pissed off at that so much. Kill every last single one of them. 11 to 13. How are we supposed to fight that? How are we supposed to fight that? Oh, with no manpower. I mean, look at that. They have divisions all over the place here. And the Farcical Republic is nice and all. But... Are you kidding me? Are you flipping kidding me right now? Go, 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 go. Let the motorized deal with the rest of this. We can probably circle and kill them all off. If they get moving their butts. Move, 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 move. My god. These. So many incompetence here. And we're losing territory because of these guys. Go in there and kill them. I don't care. Kill them off. We, we literally don't have time for this. This is ridiculous. It's absolutely 100% ridiculous. 
Move, 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 move. Uh, Magna Port, I don't really care about. Like, how did Salvin have 15 divisions? How? We killed, we had to kill every single one of them off. How? Why? That makes literally no sense to me. Are you, are you gonna move in? Get to the capital before we lose it. Come on. Oh, barely we got there. We barely got there. Jesus Christ, this is stupid. Alright, so we finally were able to do something here. Finally. My god. 11,000 manpower. Killed off. I mean... <clears throat> I definitely don't recommend people playing as a moor. At least the way we're doing it. Are you gonna move? Are you gonna move or what? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Yeah, motorized, they're just incompetent. They're just completely 100% incom incompetent. I don't want to use these guys if they're just gonna be this incompetent. Shimikov? Do we actually have a ship here? That's kind of nice. There you go. I don't think it's gonna really do too much for us, but that's fine. Uh, Lev, there you go. Good luck. At least this is the last enemy we have to take out, so. We have a ton of PP. Wow. Do we have enough guns? We got plenty enough. We really do. We just need more manpower, which is the biggest issue facing uh, the Far East. Alright, you see these guys? You gotta kill them. You gotta kill them. Would you hurry up? Come on, you stupid motorized. Go faster, faster, faster. Don't let him go in. Did you let him... Oh my god. Are you kidding me? I said don't let him go in! Oh my god, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm kind of raging right now. This is just ridiculous. This is absolutely 100% ridiculous. We had more than enough time to get rid of these guys, but... Just pisses me off, man. Alright, so you guys hold. Don't do that. You guys... Oh! No, I said hold! Do this one! <laughs> I tell them to do something, and they say no. Hey, we got a... Oh, should be back, though. That's kind of nice. Hold for now. Kill them off. Um, What do you mean you have no accessible regions? Hmm. Very odd. Okay. Hopefully we can win against those guys. Defend, defend, defend. Go, 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 go. And please, for the love of God, hopefully... Oh, that's good. We get to core this soon. Oh, that's so good. That's good, 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 good. Not bad. We killed off that division. Good. Kill... Where are, you, where, are you, where are you going? Where are you going, son? Alright, we're finally going to get him somehow. Not not because of the motorized. No, not at all, because they're too slow. But because of the infantry. The normal infantry, not motorized infantry. You guys can hold and actually go somewhere else. There you go. Go somewhere else. Oh my goodness. You don't worry about that. You guys just form the line up there. Come on. Are you going to kill them or what? There we go. Finally. Alright, so we got some more military factories. That's good. Even though we don't really need them too much. I already put a lot of things over here, which is pretty nice, actually. There you go. And do that, too. Actually, you guys can go right there. Do you actually beat them up? Not bad. Ion? Ion? How do we deal with... Uh, Peasant uprisings. How do we deal with that? I thought we were supposed to get some stuff here that we could deal with that. Russian wants more. We only have to own Yakutsk. Oh, we can do that too. That'd be very nice. Oh, man. I was hoping it would not turn out like this. Really wasn't. That's alright. Are you guys moving in? Why did you guys separate yourself so hard? Uh, where are you at? Oh, Yakutsk is up there, huh? If they go to war with us, they should not they should not have that cord yet. They really should not be allowed to have that one cord. Oh my god. Why do why why do these guys have to be so stupid? Why do we have such imbeciles leading the army here? Seven versus seven. We've killed off thirty two thousand. You think they might give it up, but nope. Yakutsk will be ours. Oh, there goes Tomsk. Fifties artillery. My God, we have no manpower. 
Um, better artillery, I guess. We need to make more encirclements. At least one more Japanese advisors are gone. That sucks. Alright, so you guys... I don't know why you guys came all the way over here. Get all the way to Amalan. All my... The strongest divisions. They decided to go all the way to the far western side here. I mean, we are we have nothing but incompetent leaders here in the military. Just pitifully stupid people. You actually might be able to do something there, then. Go there, go there, go there. You have to hold the the division's hands just, just to do anything. Actually, you can still go down there, maybe, and cut them off. If the motorized can move fast enough, which they won't, because they're stupid. Uh, where are they going? I want them to have no organization. Ah, uh, keep going that way. That's fine for now. You still have a river to think about, so there you go. And do that. Go, go back to Magadon. Keep them in place. Come on, motorize. You've got to move faster than this. My god. Move, 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 move. We gave you trucks for a reason, son. And I don't care about the infrastructure. I don't care about the, the you know, terrain. I don't care about any of that. It doesn't matter to me. Either make it happen, or just die there. Um, You're not going to circle me. No, you don't. They've got to be out of manpower. Please tell me they're out of manpower. They're out of manpower, which is not enough. This is just not enough. Uh, you guys, cut them off. Just go, go straight to the top. Oh, do we have more stuff here? Ah, uh, yes. Agricultural equipment. That'd be good. Um, no. Why? Why are they so strong? Why? We will not get pierced. We have to kill every single last one of these people off. Man, you're taking the long way around, aren't you? Alright, we got this one. That's nice. Doesn't really do much for us, though. Oh, they have two divisions there now? Come on! Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ, this is so stupid. Why? Why, 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 why? A thousand times, why? I'm sorry that I'm complaining. This is pissing me off to no end. We lost a division. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Are you flipping kidding me? Yeah, Amur needs a, just a slight boost in manpower, because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely 100% ridiculous. You find them, you keep beating the crap out of them. These motorized, I'm sorry, it just... I hate these motorized divisions. They're just so bad. They're just garbage. There's nothing you can do with them. They refuse to do anything. They refuse to move when you tell them to move. We had to use infantry to make encirclements. Why? The best thing we can do for now is just try to get their VPs. That's literally it. Because they're incompetent. They're just too ungodly incompetent. Look at that. They can't, they can't even beat a simple militia division. I, I, I don't want to use these guys. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just... I'm going crazy doing this. I'm going absolutely nuts. I do not recommend anyone play the Far East because it's ridiculous. Go down this way. Go, 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 go. Kill them off, kill them off, kill them off, kill them off. Um, eh. Organization loss and moving, that's pretty good to get. Especially right now. Well, hopefully we core that other area. We captured Magadan back. Let's scavenge for a little bit more loot, maybe. That'd be kind of good. Kill them. 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 Good. Nice. There you go. Kill them off. Kill them off. Kill them off. They do not deserve life. Are you gonna... A kilometer per hour. That's so pathetic. An they made another division. How? 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 How do they get manpower? How do they get manpower? Are they using cheats? Oh, they can't be using cheats. There's no way the AI uses. No, well, I. I uh, again, the AI has been known to use cheats for at least naval invasions. How do they get manpower? Oh, you were defeat. Oh my. Yeah, trucks are garbage. I know they're only like 12 combos probably, but still, that's ridiculous. 
That's absolutely ridiculous. You gotta go all the way, man. You gotta go all the way. Can you kill them? Please just kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. I said go. 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 And what are you doing over here? Nothing. How can you not win against these two really weak divisions? How? How in the love of God's name can you not kill them off? I'm sorry I'm going nuts, but this is just stupid. You find them, you kill them. That's all there is to it. There's nothing difficult about that. Well, Borman won. Uh, we gotta go online first. This is just ridiculous. Are we gonna move or what? Move, 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 move. That goes bald, the bald man. How? Uh, cheats. That's gotta be cheating. You are not allowed to retreat faster than we can actually get in there like that. They were defeated in what? A day? And then they were immediately over there? What a bunch of crap. That's BS. My god. No wonder I never play in the Far East. <laughs> That's why I never play here. Never play here. It's so bad. It's so god-awful. And the AI just spawns 9,000 manpower out of nothing. I mean, that's completely unfair. 100% unfair. And we get nothing. We get nothing as well. Go, 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 go. <laughs> They're more useful than the motorized. Motorized can't do jack squat. Where are you going? Where the hell are you going? Get rid of these stupid lines over here. Wait. Hello? Where's, where are their divisions? Hello? Hmm. Go in, go in, you ding-dongs. I don't know how they can move faster than we can in our own territory. I mean, that just... That eludes me, man. That just straight up eludes me. They should beat him up and keep them beaten. Don't lose. You literally have no supplies there. And you're going to lose? Uh, Go here, maybe? What are you guys doing? What are you doing here? Nothing, that's what. Move, 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 move. just ridiculous. I can't imagine the fights ever actually really uniting like this. How many tiles are over here? Oh my goodness. Come on, come on, come on. Move your chubby little legs and let's get going. Look at this division. They're literally almost dead. Because they can't defeat two simple, simple idiot divisions. Because those guys doing that. We got it. How are they not how are they not dead? How are they not dead? How are they not dead? Oh my god. Oh my god. Where are they? Where's the last VP points? Seriously. What the heck? We have literally all the VPs, don't we? How? How? Where are the We have everything! We have all their VPs and they're still Okay, the AI is cheating. It's gotta be cheating. It's gotta be cheating. This is ridiculous. We have They got back Yakutsk. After they they sh should have died. That's BS. Kill them all off. Every single last one of them. Force the attack. I don't care at this point. My god. I do not recommend anyone playing in Northern if it's going to be like this. What the heck? Why? There's this, this is not fun. That, that, I'm sorry. That was ridiculous. That, that, something has to be done here. This was just too extreme. I'm sorry. You have nothing to have. You start with nothing. And now we have to fight. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, this is just... It's insane. It's so bad. But, Russian once more. The Akuts, their resistance to our force is surprisingly brave, if not futile, have capitulated. And their territory is now firmly under our control. Already we begun to dispatch surveyors and government administrators to better bring the whole of the territory into our jurisdiction. For now, however, our military will ensure order. But as things calm down, our army of bureaucrats, rather than soldiers, will begin to extend our civilian administration throughout the territory. Russification policies, the introduction of a strict social hierarchy, and the extension of our corporate economic system will all help to ensure that their ultimate integration of the former Yakut Republic into our ever expanding Russian state. I really don't recommend anyone ever playing in Moor. But, workers for the mines. 
dig deep greedily, dig greedily, dig for your nation. As a slogan that is becoming increasingly common within the diamond mines that dot out near West Yakutian province. These mines, some underground and some open air, are filled with Russians and Yakuts alike working day and night to mine the vast quantities of diamonds that were previously hidden under the harsh Siberian terrain. However, conditions in these mines are less than ideal, and it's becoming increasingly hard to find willing miners to work 12 hours a day. If we're not able to find anyone to work in the mines on their own accord, we may have to produce volunteers who will be able to extend both the available manpower of those mines and their productivity. These volunteers can be first recruited from the defeated Yakutian army, many of whom are still imprisoned in military camps following their surrender, but I've got to end the episode here because I've got to take a break because this has just pissed me off to no end. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in which we will hopefully, hopefully much more easily be able to destroy the Commonwealth of Siberia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.